farm credit system has always been there for me. I remember my first PCA loan in 1961 and my first land bank loan in 1971. I've seen the difference that a strong farm credit system can make and that's why it was so important in 1987 to get legislation to put the system back on its feet, to make the system part of the solution. From as far back as 1917 and on through the Great Depression, the farm credit system has been a friend and partner to agriculture in all parts of the country. But in the last three years, however, this relationship has been strained by economic forces and policies beyond the system's control. Since the system reported its first ever system-wide loss in 1985, employees and directors have worked long and hard to bring the situation under control without outside help. Despite our best efforts to stem the impact of the devastating agricultural depression, the hard fact remains that certain banks and associations don't have enough capital to see their way through. On January 6th, President Reagan signed legislation that assures the farm credit system will have the financial resources necessary to carry out its mandate, to provide farmers, ranchers, and their cooperatives with a dependable supply of competitively priced credit in an increasingly competitive market. Well, today's signing of the Farm Credit Act should help alleviate some of those woes. The act ensures that the farm credit system will continue as a principal source of private credit to America's farmers, while at the same time implements many needed reforms to the system to ensure its long-term viability. The bill that the president signed meets virtually all of the system's legislative objectives. These objectives were developed with input from the district banks and the local associations. We wanted every farmer and rancher who had the ability to regain his financial strength to be given a chance to do so. We wanted to protect the stock of our 600,000 member borrowers. We wanted financial assistance for system entities that needed it, with the understanding that the system would eventually repay it. We paid back government capital before and we intend to do so again. At the same time, the system's legislative committee sought to preserve the long-term future of the farm credit system as a farmer-owned and controlled source of credit and to resolve system litigation related to capital sharing. Our objective was to achieve legislation that would make the system strong and competitive. And with the 1987 Act in hand, I believe we can achieve those objectives. And that's good for borrowers as well as employees. I believe that it will make my job much more enjoyable. I won't have to defend the system. I can now uh, begin to shift my focus back towards the farmer and what his needs and wants are. It does the same thing for the farm credit system as it does for the individual borrower. It gives them uh, the time and the, and, the, and the funds to get back on their feet. I think there are some points in there that, that we like and some points that we don't like. Uh, it's a relief in a way that it's over finally, that it is set. However, one of the big unknowns is how it will be interpreted. So. The Agricultural Credit Act of 1987 was passed by the U.S. Senate and the House of Representatives with overwhelming support. Few legislative initiatives have been given more thought and deliberation. Congress has done its best to ensure that the 1987 legislation benefits farmers, ranchers, and their cooperatives. Congressmen and senators listened patiently to all sides and viewpoints in crafting final consensus legislation. It was clear from the beginning that this legislation would be far more than simply a bailout of the farm credit system. This is landmark credit legislation, legislation that affects all farmers and farm lenders, not just those identified with the farm credit system, for generations to come. Indeed, the 1987 Act is a sweeping piece of legislation designed to help farm lenders help farm borrowers. We're member-owned and member-controlled. Farm credit is, will go farther than any other institution in agriculture to try to help them get through the good times and the bad. It's my feeling that the merger of the PCAs and the Federal Land Bank Associations provide uh, the new joint office with a unique opportunity to uh, do a tremendous amount of marketing. I think one of the things that we should be concentrating on is uh, redoing our massive amounts of paperwork and consolidating them like they're consolidating the system. 
and we need to spend more time on uh, contacting the membership, talking with them, finding out what's going on there, doing uh, the kind of work that we're meant to do. Here's a rundown of some of the more important provisions. The 1987 Act provides up to $4 billion in financial assistance for financially troubled farm credit banks and associations. This financial assistance will be raised by a newly created financial assistance corporation through the sale of federally guaranteed farm credit securities. All financial assistance will be distributed by a newly created federal assistance board. The federal assistance board will oversee the use of all government financial assistance and will work with banks and associations that receive such assistance to ensure that it is used effectively and efficiently to benefit farm borrowers. The Secretary of Agriculture, the Secretary of Treasury, and a farmer appointed by the President of the United States will serve on this board. It's important to remember that those institutions that don't receive financial assistance will not be subject to oversight by the assistance board. This assistance will protect borrower stock and assure that farmers and ranchers in all parts of the country will have a dependable source of credit at competitive rates from their farm credit system. In addition, the obligation for 1986 third quarter capital sharing agreements will be assumed by the Financial Assistance Corporation. Contributing banks under this agreement will reverse their previously accrued obligations. Under the new law, reversed capital will be replenished by the Assistance Corporation. It will not, however, constitute federal aid and therefore will not be accompanied by federal oversight. The new bill also grants expanded authorities to bank and association stockholders to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of their institutions through the merger of unlike institutions. By July 6, 1988, the new law mandates the Federal Land Bank and the Federal Intermediate Credit Bank in each district to merge into a single district farm credit bank. Within six months of when the district farm credit bank is formed, the FLBAs and PCAs in that district which serve similar territories must vote to either merge with each other or remain independent. Within 18 months of enactment, the new law also requires that farm credit banks' stockholders vote on a district consolidation plan to reduce the number of districts in the system to no less than six. Now, on the Bank for Cooperatives side, all BCs must vote by July 6, 1988, on a plan to merge into a single national Bank for Cooperatives. Together, all of these provisions give the system's farmer owners a major opportunity to structure their institutions more competitively for the future. We applaud the Congress for taking this bold step. New borrower rights provisions in the 1987 Act require the system to restructure distressed loans if the borrower can regain his financial viability as a result of the loan restructuring and if the restructuring costs less than foreclosure. Other borrower rights provisions give borrowers greater access to loan information the right to appeal adverse credit decisions, and the right of first refusal to either purchase or lease acquired properties. The new law also provides extensive borrower right protections that should ensure fair treatment for all farmers. We are fortunate that Congress adopted loan restructuring language that is virtually identical to the system's existing guidelines. The Act also creates a secondary mortgage market for farm real estate loans by establishing the Federal Agricultural Mortgage Corporation. Nicknamed Farmer Mac, this new entity will guarantee pools of farm real estate loans made by commercial banks, savings and loan institutions, life insurance companies, and system institutions. These loan pools will then be sold to investors. How much of an impact Farmer Mac will have on the market is difficult to predict. It's safe to assume, however, that more competition will result for farm real estate loans. The new law also gives stockholders the authority to develop new methods for generating permanent risk capital to replace the borrower's stock requirement. Borrowers, however, will be required to purchase a very small amount of voting stock to retain the system's cooperative structure. Finally, another provision establishes a system-funded insurance reserve similar to FDIC. This fund will be administered by the newly created Farm Credit Insurance Corporation. The corporation will open its doors in 1989. It will assure that farm credit bank obligations will be met in the event of a financial crisis. I, I think we should make clear right now that this is a non-budgetary assistance 
from everything that I've read. And therefore, the government is making it available, but it is neither a handout, a gift, or a loan. We've survived because of the, the support we've gotten from our farm credit lenders. I mean that. Now, we've survived some of them, too. I, I guess you have no choice but to conclude that the bill is good, needed, and just in time. The Agricultural Credit Act of 1987 is the third farm credit bill in as many years to come out of Washington. Congress has high expectations that the system now has the tools to serve American agriculture efficiently and to put its own operations back on sound footing. Congress, by design, has brought several critical issues to the surface. The new bill protects borrower stock, it provides financial assistance to those who need it, it sets the stage for stockholders to address the critical structural issues within the system, but it also opens the door to increased competition. Both the administration and the Congress have reaffirmed their support for us in farm credit and for what we do. But if we're going to regain our financial viability, and if we're going to be able to compete effectively in the future, we must continue our efforts to be service-oriented and market-driven and to be more efficient in every aspect of our business. There's no doubt about it, the ball is now in our court. Banks and associations all across the country are busily developing their business plans for 1988 and beyond. But no matter how good these strategies are, it's the commitment and dedication of every employee and director that will make the difference. I'm convinced we've got the best people in the business. Now we have the resources and the legal authorities to succeed. No other farm lender has done as much for agriculture as the farm credit system. We can be proud of the progress that we have made in the most trying of times. With this new legislation, we can complete the tasks that we have begun. For all of us in the system, a new day is dawning.